No, it was this one. Um, okay, so we can start. Um, uh, thank you everybody for uh, for attending uh, this uh, seminar. The talk of today is about how to make the transfer into turbulent convection and turbulent shear flow. Uh, and the speaker of today is Genta Kawahara uh, from the uh, University of Osaka. Uh, so let me quickly introduce him and then uh, I leave him the stage for the webinar. So uh, Dr. Genta Kawahara received his PhD in engineering from uh, Osaka University in 1994. He became an associate professor at the Faculty of Engineering at Inna University in 1996. After starting uh, staying uh, as a business uh, scholar at the Center of Turbulence Research uh, in uh, Stanford, he became an associate professor at the Graduate School of Engineering, Kyoto University in 2001. He, has, uh, he was appointed uh, to a full professor at the Graduate School of Engineering Science of Osaka University in 2005 and he became the Dean of the Graduate School of Engineering Science in 2013. He was appointed as an Executive Vice, Vice President of Osaka University in 2017, and he is now an Associate Editor of the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. Dr. Kawahara has worked on the theoretical characterization of turbulent flows in uh, terms of simple invariant solutions to the Navier-Stokes equation, he has also described the process of subcritical transition to turbulence using dynamical system theory. Uh, Dr. Kawahara is now tackling the ultimate heat transfer in uh, uh, well bounded thermal convection and shear flow, where not only the energy dissipation rate, but also the uh, work heat flux are uh, independent of viscosity of thermal convection. It's a great pleasure that it's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, uh, Genta Kawahara for his uh, uh, seminar of today. Of today. Uh, Genta, I stop sharing my screen and I uh, leave you the stage. Thank you very much. So I'm going to share my slide. Yeah. Do you see my slide? Yes, yes, we can see your slide. And I really appreciate kind introduction. And I'm Genta Kawahara from Osaka University. It is a great pleasure for me to be here in very interesting the webinar. And I really appreciate kind invitation of the organizer of this webinar. Now I'm very interested in the ultimate heat transfer in turbulent flows. In ultimate scaling, turbulent heat flux is independent of the uh, thermal diffusivity or thermal conductivity. Although the near wall heat transfer is dominated by thermal conduction. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to discuss ultimate heat. Excuse me. ultimate heat transfer in turbulent thermal convection and wall bounded turbulent shear flow. This is my joint work with my colleagues, Motoki-san and Shimizu-san and my former students, Kawano-kun and Tsugawa-kun. Let me start the discussion on turbulent ready banal convection. Lady Bader convection is a convection in horizontal fluid layer, heated from below and cooled from above, and controlling parameter of this system is Lady number. And Lady number, we see that this delta T, so this is something like the dimensionless temperature difference between the hot bottom wall between hot bottom wall and cold top wall. And if we consider our typical velocity scale as buoyancy induced terminal velocity through the full height of the fluid layer, we have this relation between Rayleigh number and Reynolds number. So if we increase Ray and thus Reynolds, what we see is the onset of 
thermal convection, and eventually we observed fully developed turbulent thermal convection. And in this system, one of the most important physical quantities is wall-to-wall -wall heat flux. That is a Nusselto number. It is a dimensionless heat flux normalized with thermal conduction heat flux. And it is very well known that Nusselto number scale with ready to around one third, what we call classical scaling up to extremely high lady number. However, there are rigorous upper bounds on Nusselto number in thermal convection. In the bounds, we see the factor ready to one half. And this factor is quite distinct from ready to one third in classical scaling. And in this ready to one half scaling, we observe that heat flux scales with global temperature difference and buoyancy induced terminal velocity. And this expression does not depend on the thermal diffusivity or thermal conductivity. Although, as I mentioned just before, the thermal heat transfer is dominated by thermal conduction on the wall. So this is what we call ultimate scaling. And it has been suggested by Spiegel and Kreitschnam for extremely high ready number. However, as I mentioned, what we observe in reality is a classical scaling at extremely high Rayleigh number. And in this configuration, we have energy budget equation. This one relating energy dissipation rate and buoyancy power, including Nusselto number. So this relation tells us that Ultimate scaling is equivalent with Taylor's dissipation law. And in Taylor's dissipation law, epsilon is independent of viscosity. And here again, U is buoyancy induced terminal velocity and the full height of the fluid wave. So how about turbulent shear flow in smooth pipe? Of course, in this case, our parameter is Reynolds number. And important physical quantities are wall friction and wall heat flux. The former is friction coefficient. And here we use the force balance between temperature, excuse me, pressure drop and friction. And we know CF decreases with increasing Reynolds number. And how about heat flux? In case of forced convection, we use Stanton number instead of Nusselto number. This is a dimensionless wall heat flux normalized with global temperature difference and forced flow velocity such as bulk mean velocity. So from this definition, we know that ultimate scaling is represented by constant Stanton in forced convection. Or if we consider the relation between the thermal convection by using buoyancy induced terminal velocity here, we have this relation between Stanton and Nusselt. So you see, Ultimate scaling represented by Nusselt scaling with ready to one half implies constant stamp. However, in real pipe flow, we see the similarity between momentum and heat transfer. Here, this is the Chilton Corban analogy, the empirical relation in turbulent flow and rigorous in laminar flow. And you see, Stanton is proportional to CF. 
So ratio between Stanton and CF is constant in smooth pipe, implying that decreasing CF leads to decreasing Stanton. So we cannot observe ultimate scaling in turbulent pipe flow. So the question arises now, that is, is ultimate scaling achievable by changing the boundary condition? The answer is partially yes in wall-free convection. That is something we call this homogeneous turbulent convection driven by vertical constant temperature gradient. And but uh, to be honest, it is almost trivial because we are free from the wall. So we are free from the thermal conduction. So we can observe ultimate scaling this type of flow. And how about uh, wall bounded case? The answer is no on rough wall surface. This is a result for the thermal convection. And you see ultimate scaling in the finite range of Rayleigh number. But what we see at the higher Reynolds number, higher Rayleigh number is classical scaling. This is because if we increase the Rayleigh number, we see the thinner thermal conduction layer. And that is much lower than the dimension of roughness. So roughness to, does not enhance heat transfer inside of a thermal conduction layer. How about turbulent shear flow in fully rough pipe? We know that if we introduce uh, surface roughness in pipe flow in fully rough regime, we observe constant shear. And in this case, if we use energy budget equation in pipe flow, we can relate pressure force, excuse me, pressure power and energy dissipation rate. So constant CF implies Taylor's dissipation law. How about Stanton number? As I mentioned just before, constant Stanton represent ultimate heat transfer, but in this case, we see the decreasing Stanton number while CF is constant. It is really but result in engineering application because the introduction of surface snuffness enhance the friction, but not heat transfer. Anyway, even in the case of rough wall pipe, we cannot observe ultimate heat transfer. On the other hand, in our prior work, long time before, we perform direct numerical simulation of permeable channel turbulence. And in this permeable channel, we observe that wall permeability induces the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. Through this instability, we can find very large scale spanwise law as shown here. This is a spanwise averaged fluctuation velocity. And we see the large scale rolls and this large scale structure induces wall normal fluid motion. And thus, we have the strong momentum heat transfer enhancement by the introduction of permeable walls. Actually, we see the significant increase in CF in permeable case. So in my talk, my question is, is ultimate heat transfer achievable in wall bounded turbulent convection or wall bounded turbulent shear flow. For this question, I'm going to introduce our results 
The first one is for heat transfer and thermal convection between permeable walls. And second one is heat and momentum transfer in permeable channel four. In both cases, I will explain, we achieve ultimate heat transfer. And if I have time, I'm going to briefly talk about the latest result on more, more realistic permeable configurations. This is our no slip permeable boundary condition, first suggested by our prior work. And please imagine the situation in which we have a channel of a container between the permeable walls and underneath and overhead the permeable wall, we have a plenum chamber. And the permeable wall consists of the a kind of bundle of wall normal straws. So if we have that velocity, excuse me, pressure difference between here and here, we have the wall normal fluid motion. And this is our boundary condition in the wall normal direction. That is a dull zero. The pressure difference with respect to the plenum chamber. We have the wall normal velocity, lower wall and upper wall. And beta is a positive constant representing the permeability. And uh, this bundle of straw is oriented in wall normal direction. So we still expect no slip boundary condition in tangential components. And the uh, temperature is fixed at, is, const, is kept at constant value in the permeable wall. So in thermal convection configuration, the lower wall had a higher temperature. And in channel flow configuration, we have a consistent temperature, constant temperature, upper and lower walls. And if beta goes to zero, our wall is impermeable. And if beta goes to infinity, our wall is fully permeable. If we suppose that the flow in permeable wall or the bundle of straw is hagen positive flow, we estimate the value of beta here. So in thermal convection configuration, by using buoyancy due to terminal velocity, we have the dimensionless form of beta u. And in forced convection, wall bounded shear flow, we use uh, bulk mean velocity to have this expression. And in both cases, at the typical values of Rayleigh or Reynolds and for the dimensions of the permeable wall, we have beta UB of the order of unity. And we consider later the, uh, the beta U of the order, order of unity. So in short, what I will explain just later can be achieved in physical experiments. And this slide shows shear stress, heat flux and energy budget equation. And the shear stress, is shear stress equation is just for the wall bounded case. And you see mean pressure gradient in the streamwise direction driving the flow and here friction velocity. And in heat flux equation, for wall bounded case, we impose uniform internal heating corresponding to mean pressure gradient. And here we see friction temperature. And this is energy budget equation. In thermal convection, 
of course, we have the buoyancy power. And buoyancy power is written in this form through heat flux equation. And in wall banded shear flow, we have pressure power here. And this is written in this form through shear stress equation. And this is energy budget equation. Excuse me. This is energy dissipation rate. And in addition to these three, we have additional terms here and here. They stems from they stem from the wall permeability. And this is the pressure power on permeable wall. And this is outflow energy across the permeable wall. And you see this term is positive. And this term has been confirmed positive numerically. So these two terms will extract or take, take away the energy from the system. In another words, these are uh, energy sink rather than energy source. So I would like to stress that by introduction of wall permeability, we don't have any additional energy source. What we see is just energy sink. Now I'm going to explain our results on turbulent thermal convection. Our basic equations are Bujinescu equation. So the temperature is a passive, excuse me, active scalar in this configuration. Permeable parameter, dimensionless permeable parameter is set to zero and three. And the Rayleigh number is changed in this range. And the Brandtl number is set to unity. And horizontal period is set to H. And we also perform the DNS for these value, different values of Brandtl or uh, horizontal period. And we can also confirm ultimate scaling, which I will explain just later. So we just show our result for plant unity and LXLZH. We perform spectral direct numerical simulation to have numerical results. This is a uh, Nusselto number as a function of Rayleigh number. In permeable case, we see classical scaling at higher lady number, lady to one third. On the other hand, in permeable case, at lower lady number, we see classical scaling. However, at higher lady number, we see the ultimate scaling, lady to one half. In compensated lady number, excuse me, Nusselt number plot, we clearly see the ultimate scaling here. And it is interesting that the Nusselt number exhibit critical change from the classical scaling to ultimate scaling at around lady equals 10 to 7. This slide shows the vertical RMS velocity in permeable wall. So as a function of lady number, and this one shows the normalized value with a, a difference velocity. This is a typical velocity scale in near wall region of impermeable case. And even in a permeable case, at the sub subcritical lady number, what we see is a consistent scaling of wall normal velocity fluctuation with impermeable case. However, if we further increase the lady number beyond 10 to 7, we see the increasing fluctuation, normalized fluctuation. Now, what is the velocity scale of 
this supercritical case? The answer is the buoyancy induced terminal velocity. We see the clear scaling with this buoyancy induced terminal velocity. So I, I would like to mention that just the introduction of permeability could lead to the uh, strong enhancement of heat transfer or ultimate scaling. We need some critical change between the flow state. And this slide shows the uh, mean temperature in permeable case and permeable case. In permeable case, we see the uh, steeper temperature gradient near the wall and we see the inner scaling with thermal conduction lengths. And in the bulk region, we also see vanishing mean temperature gradient. On the other hand, in permeable case, especially at supercritical Rayleigh number, we see almost consistent temperature, mean temperature distribution, except for near wall region. Of course, near wall region, we see the thermal conduction layer, but the bulk region, we see the independence of the mean temperature profile of Rayleigh number. And uh, we also observe the finite value of temperature gradient in bulk region. This is a near wall vertical RMS velocity in permeable case and permeable case. In permeable case, as I mentioned before, we observe the, the scaling with this reference velocity. And even in subcritical permeable case, we see the similar behavior to impermeable case, but at supercritical ready number, impermeable case, we see the different scaling. That is the buoyancy induced terminal velocity scaling. And this is the vertical RMS velocity in permeable case. And at subcritical ready number in the bulk region, we see the, the scaling of wall normal velocity fluctuation with this uh, reference velocity. However, at supercritical permeable, in supercritical permeable case, we see the scaling of wall normal velocity with buoyancy induced terminal velocity in full height of the fluid layer. And how about RMS temperature in permeable case? At subcritical Reynolds number, we see the, the classical scaling. But at supercritical in supercritical permeable case, we see the uh, scaling of temperature fluctuation with global temper temperature difference in the bulk region, except for near wall, thermal conduction layer. And I'm going to explain these scaling properties later. And these are flow structures in thermal convection in impermeable case and supercritical permeable case. Even at the same value of Rayleigh number, we see the big difference between the two. In impermeable case, we see small scale thermal plume in near wall region, but in the bulk region, we see the large scale thermal plume. On the other hand, in supercritical permeable case, we see the large scale thermal plume even in the vicinity of near vicinity of the wall. And this large scale plume fully extend from one wall to the other wall. This is a summer and flow uh, structures on the horizontal plane in 
thermal conduction layer. In permeable and permeable cases, and temperature, wall normal velocity, and turbulent heat flux. And you see in impermeable case, very small scale thermal plume in thermal conduction layer. But what we see in supercritical permeable case is even in near wall region, we see the large scale thermal plume. And on the mid plane, we observe more or less the same, the thermal and flow structures, just large scale thermal blue. This is the buoyancy power spectra as a function of horizontal wavelengths and the distance to the wall. And this one is normalized with uh, a thermal conduction thickness and impermeable case and supercritical permeable case. And impermeable case, you see the small scale thermal plume in thermal conduction layer. That is a consequence of the buoyancy. And uh, in supercritical permeable case, even in the thermal conduction layer, we see the large scale thermal plume driven by buoyancy. We see the big difference between the two. The key structure in supercritical permeable case is a large scale thermal plume, even in the vicinity of the wall. And this slide shows the linear critical ready number in thermal conduction layer on permeable wall. Critical Lady number as a function of horizontal wavelengths normalized with uh, thermal conduction layer. And you see in impermeable case, the horizontal length scale of the convection is around conduction, the thickness of conduction layer. But if we increase uh, uh, permeability parameter, we see the enhancement or excitation of the large scale thermal convection and the, the stronger instability. This is a key a consequence for the, uh, the appearance of the large scale structure in the, even in the thermal conduction layer. Now I'm going to uh, have the physical interpretation of our scaling properties. In permeable case or subcritical permeable case, of course, we introduce uh, permeability in permeable case, but uh, we do not see the activation of the wall normal motion in near wall region. So they are more or less the same. And we see the big the change in temperature and also in velocity in thermal conduction layer. And here I suppose that our plant rule number is around unity, so wall layer thickness and thermal conduction length would be comparable with the other. And in near wall region, typical temperature scale is delta T, of course, and the bulk region. I suppose that the temperature fluctuation is delta T prime to be estimated later. And outer region, the velocity scale is U and inner region, U prime. And in thermal conduction or uh, viscous sublayer, we have this relation. This is the estimate of the uh, thermal conduction length. And in Bujinescu equation, we expect the significance of the uh, viscous term because we have a big change in the velocity. So this viscous effect could be comparable with inertia effect and the buoyancy effect. And these two equations could give us the estimate of 
the velocity scale in your wall region here, and classical scaling of Nusselto number. And I already showed you before, actually we see the scaling of this velocity, this velocity scale in your wall region. And the bulk region, we can drop the effect of viscosity, of course, and we have the balance of these two terms in Bujinescu equation. Here in delta T prime is the outer uh, scale in temperature difference. And the uh, Nusselto number is independent at any height. So we can rewrite Nusselto number in this way. And this is comparable with ready to one third. And the two, these two equations give us the estimate of temperature fluctuation in bulk region and velocity fluctuation. And uh, this estimate would be completely consistent with what I showed you just before. And Rossmann Rose also obtained this estimate from different arguments. And how about sub supercritical variable case? And in this case, we see the activation of a wall normal motion even in the vicinity of the wall. So we don't see any big change in the wall layer in velocity. And the temperature has a, a, a fluctuation even in the bulk region. So we expect this balance in the Bujines equation. The inertia and uh, buoyancy. And here we see the delta T because uh, we have the fluctuation in whole region. They're represented by delta T and no small scale in wall normal velocity. So here H and uniform velocity scale in the full layer. And eventually we have the buoyancy induced terminal velocity as a typical single velocity scale and a single velocity scale u and a single length scale h. So we have the Taylor dispensial law in this system. And eventually, Nusselto number is estimated in this way, the turbulent heat flux. And the delta t is a delta t and the u is now buoyancy induced terminal velocity. We have ready to one half. And next, we briefly explain that our result on turbulent channel form. In this case, we consider forced convection. So we introduce a, a mean velocity gradient, but we throw away the buoyancy term. So in this case, temperature is a passive scalar. And the passive scalar equation, we impose a uniform internal heating corresponding to uh, mean pressure gradient. And they are uh, fixed, excuse me, they are determined so that we may have constant bulk mean and bulk mean, bulk mean velocity and bulk mean temperature. And dimensionless permeable parameter is set to 0, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. And Reynolds number is changed in this range and the plant row number is set to unity. And we consider the uh, periodic box given by this dimension. And we perform spectral direct numerical simulation. And this is uh, a Stanton and the CF as a function of Reynolds number. As you see, impermeable case and less permeable case. Stanton and CF decreases with increasing Reynolds number, as in the canonical turbulent channel form. And the Stanton and CF are almost consistent with each other. That is a consequence of similarity between momentum and heat transfer. However, permeable case at higher rate Reynolds number, we see not only constant CF, but also constant Stanton number. So this implies 
the achievement of ultimate heat transfer in some, uh, host convection. Please note that in rough turbulent channel flow or rough pipe flow, we can achieve constant CF, but not stunt. So just in case of the permeable channel, we achieve ultimate heat transfer. And later, I show the flow structure at lower Reynolds number and the highest Reynolds number in permeable case. And this is the mean velocity. And in less permeable case and permeable case. As you see, in less permeable case, there, is, there appears a wall law. Linear sublayer, buffer layer, log layer. However, in permeable case, we see the linear sublayer, but we don't see any log layer. And what we see in the bulk region is the scaling of mean prop mean velocity with bulk velocity and the channel height here. And the same is true for the temperature. Mean temperature ex exhibits wall row again, but except for thermal conduction layer in permeable case, we see the scaling of mean temperature profile with bulk mean velocity and channel height. And how about RMS velocity? We know that RMS velocity in usual wall bandage shear flow cannot scale with UB and H. But in case of permeable wall, we see the RMS velocity in a bulk region scale with UB and H, you see here and here. There are big contrast between the less permeable and the permeable case. And it's the same is true for the temperature fluctuation. We see in permeable case, the temperature fluctuation also scale with TB and H, as in RMS velocity. And this is a flow structure. And this is a wall normal velocity on permeable walls at lower Reynolds number and higher Reynolds number in permeable case. At, at higher Reynolds number, we observe ultimate scaling. And you see, even at lower Reynolds number, we see the indication of the spanwise organi organization of the fluctuation velocity, but amplitude of the fluctuation velocity on the wall is relatively small. However, at higher Reynolds number, we see the significant spanwise organization and amplitude of the fluctuation velocity is quite large. And this spanwise organization is a consequence of the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. In our, our prior work, we performed linear stability analysis in permeable channel flow. And this is a neutral curve. Thick one is neutral curve, and the thin curve represents a, a, a growth rate as a function of beta and streamwise wavelengths, lambda. And in our case, we have fixed our periodic box to at pi. So please see this line. So what is the critical condition is around beta UB is 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. So as I mentioned, beta UB equals 0 0.5, we see the spanwise organization even at the lower Reynolds number comparable with this one. So I can confirm the spanwise organization is a consequence of the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. And this is the flow structure. The velocity and temperature uh, averaged in the spanwise direction because we see the spanwise organization even at lower Reynolds number, 
we see the indication of span-wise large-scale row and associated with uh, a temperature fluctuation and usual three months vortices. At the higher Reynolds number, we see the significant organization of the span-wise large-scale rows and associated with the large amplitude of temperature fluctuation. And this is the near wall velocity and temperature. And this is velocity and this is temperature and lower Reynolds number and higher Reynolds number. And you see in lower Reynolds number uh, in near wall region, the relatively quiescent state. However, at higher Reynolds number, strong span wise rolls induce large amplitude of fluctuation in not only in velocity and but also temperature, even in a linear subway. And what is interesting for me is that velocity and temperature exhibits almost consistent behavior here and here. And I have drawn the null velocity contour, but at any time they are stuck to the wall, implying that there is no flow separation in this configuration. This is a key to the similar behavior between velocity and temperature. In rough wall channel flow, of course, we have a flow separation downstream of the surface roughness. And here we have a vortices, and these vortices play a role in the enhancement of momentum transfer. However, these vortices out of, out of thermal conduction layer stuck to the surface roughness. So we see the big difference between the transfer, excuse me, this similarity of transfer between momentum and heat transfer. That's why introduction of surface, surface roughness can lead to the constant CF, but not constant stunt, decreasing stunt. This is uh, the, the key results of the failure for the constant stunt or ultimate heat transfer. But in permeable case, we expect relaxation of near or high pressure. Because if we have high pressure on the permeable wall, flow, the fluid immediately go in the permeable wall to relax the high pressure. So we prevent the flow separation. Excuse me. We prevent the flow separation. So this is a physical interpretation. Kelvin Helmholtz instability induces large scale span wise rolls. And this is large scale. So we have the length scale of height of the channel and thus the bulk mean velocity fluctuation. And as I mentioned just before, we are free from the flow separation in, in this configuration. So velocity and temperature behaves similar, similarly. So isotherm also uh, in this way. So temperature fluctuation of the, is also of the order of bulk mean value. Therefore, Typical velocity scale is UB and length scale is H. So we expect theta dissipation row and thus constant CF and no separation, the similar behavior between temperature and velocity. So wall heat flux should be, should be of the order of TB times UB. So velocity temperature scale and velocity scale implying ultimate scale and constant stunt. So 
constant CF and constant stamp. The similarity comes from the uh, similar behavior of temperature and velocity. Now I'm going to conclude my talk. Ultimate scaling can hardly be observed in wall banded turbulent convection or turbulent heat, turbulent shear flow. In turbulent convection and shear flows between no slip permeable with viscous and conduction layer, we observe that the ultimate scale has been achieved as a consequence of large scale thermal plume even in the vicinity of the walls. Regarding channel flow, we observe that the ultimate scaling and Taylor's dissipation rule have been achieved as a consequence of the Kelvin Helmholtz instability, leading to large scale turbulence without flow separation. And I am briefly explain introduce our latest result on more realistic permeable configuration. In this slide shows a 2D turbulent thermal convection between the porous wall, this one and this one. And we see ultimate scaling even in more realistic configuration. And uh, this really shows uh, uh, the more realistic configuration for wall banded shear flow. The flow above the porous wall. And you see span wise organization. So we are now increasing Reynolds number to see if the ultimate scaling appears in more realistic configuration. Thank you very much for your attention. So thank you, thank you very much for this very interesting and comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I would like directly to open the stage for, for questions. So if there is someone who, who wants to ask a question, just feel free to unmute your mic and, uh, and ask your question. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I don't know if my camera. Thank you for the talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, so um, my question is that uh, um, well, first of all, a question alpha versus Rayleigh when the parameter beta is increased beyond the three. Um, if uh, the, there is a shift in the prefactor, uh, if the scaling remains the same. So that was my first question. And the second question is connected to the, 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 implement, the realization of the experiments. Uh, in particular, I, 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 I'm curious about these uh, realistic configurations. And my question is that, uh, uh, so if you base the Reynolds number based on the fluid section, the Rayleigh number based on the fluid section, you will have a scaling Nusselt versus Rayleigh to the one half. But what happens if you based your Rayleigh number on the full size of the system? Will you have Nusselt versus Rayleigh to the one third again? So, I mean, is in fact this Rayleigh to the one half only an effect of the fact that you are looking only at one portion of your system and not to the full system. I see. Okay. So thank you very much. And the first part of the, your question, so if we increase the beta, so beta, so beta UB, of course we see the, the consistent scaling. So as you mentioned, we see the larger prefactor. Okay. And uh, will you oh. get to the prefactor of uh, Charlie Daring and Constantine that uh, ultimately you will go to do that to that? Yes. Yeah. So the, the scaling exponent would be consistent, but uh, we see the increase in the prefactor. Okay. And the second question is uh, so what I explained in my last part is uh, ongoing study. So 
So maybe if we, of course, strictly speaking, by using the uh, immersed boundary method to reproduce, uh, excuse me. to reproduce this part. So in that sense, of course, we don't, uh, we have not introduced uh, internal heating, but uh, we had uh, uh, the heat source in a solid body. So the interpretation of the, uh, uh, this part uh -huh. is not so uh, trivial, but at least, I can say that the heat flux of this part is uh, uh, completely uh, estimated because in this part, we don't have any uh, heat source. So we can observe this one. Okay, I understand, thank you. The, this made me think to some experiments that were done in Lyon some time mm -hmm. ago in which they had uh, a channel and two chambers, one on top, one on the bottom. They were heating from the bottom and they mm -hmm. were detecting a ultimate regime on a Rayleigh, Rayleigh number, which was based on the on center of the system, on the height of the cylinder. But if they were considering the full cylinder, they had still the, uh, the, the standard Rayleigh to the one third. So, so my, my final question is this. You, in the, your last slide, you mentioned that uh, the ultimate scaling can hardly be observed in wall bonded uh, flows. What do you mean for hardly? Is something like, uh, do you think it will never be observed or that uh, there is still hope to observe it in real okay. wall bonded flow? So in that sense, we should add the quotation mark before and after the wall bonded. Because in our configuration, we still impose a uh, uh, streamwise in stream, uh, excuse me, tangential direction at no three boundary condition. In that sense, I believe that our permeable is also wall. So if we consider that is uh, the wall, <laughs> up to the situation we can achieve. Okay. But as you mentioned, if we consider the impermeable, no strip and the impermeable wall, so it, I believe it is not possible, not possible. for us to achieve. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, so, yeah, so there is someone else. Uh, uh, please, Mark, and uh, just uh, unmute your, your mic. And, uh, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, hope I'm coming through. So thank you very much, uh, Genta, for this very interesting talk. Um, I found it very interesting that when you discuss the scales, say the, the effect on the near wall region of the, the diff from different regimes. And my question is, um, the, the transition to the ultimate regime that you see in the permeable permeable case, is this more like that there are large scale structures reaching to the wall in addition to the small scale structures or do the small scale structures uh, dis disappear? I see, thank you very much. So for example, in case of wall bonded shear flows, you see this is a, a linear sublayer. And uh, this is uh, uh, the flow visualization by using a second invariant velocity gradient tensor. So if we see this one, so I cannot say that uh, the whole near wall structure, small structure disappear. Maybe they still exist, 
because you see that this, this smaller one is a typical the stream I tubular vortices. But uh, at the same time, we have a large scale structures. And in case in the, for heat transfer enhancements, this play a significant role. And uh, in thermal convection, Yes, exactly. Yes, is, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is what, yeah, exactly. See, okay. We see that this one is a small plume, yeah. and uh, this is a large plume. But uh, if we carefully look at the, we see the some call the wiggle. And I am not sure, but uh, we have something here, the, uh, the similar one. But uh, if we compare this and this, that is much, signif much more significant. So this means uh, actually in a supercritical regime, there's absence of small scales, right? Yeah, supercritical uh, regime. Uh, this is interesting because this is what I see in the stochastic models that I'm using for radi radiatively driven uh, convection experiments. So this is the same trend. I mean, this is very interesting. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. This is, this is really, really very, very insightful. Thank you very much. Uh, so some more questions, you can just uh, just feel free to, to open your mic or you can write in the chat and we'll report the question. Uh, Genta. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to your comments. No, <laughs> I, I, I won't work in this area, but uh, uh, you seem to say that when you have high, high Reynolds number, high, high Rayleigh number, and you are in the permeable case, you get the ultimate regime. Mm -hmm. But there are many ways of being permeable. You seem to say that it doesn't matter what way, what kind of permeability you have. There are so many different ways of being permeable. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand your point. So you uh, uh, implement the permeability. Permeability, yeah. There must, there, there must be many ways of being permeable. Mm -hmm. Many ways of... of, of, of uh, of having permeability. I see. So we so, are uh, a, variety, a wide variety of possibility for implementation of permeability in the world. Yes. I, I agree. And, and, and my question is very simple. Uh, you expect this ultimate uh, regime at higher numbers to appear whatever the type of permeability you have? I think so. The key is uh, if our permeability would lead to the large scale structure. In yeah. case of thermal convection, large scale plume. In case of the turbulent channel flow, the large scale span wire rolls. If we activate large scale structures even in the vicinity of the wall, we expect the appearance of the ultimate heat transfer. Okay. Okay. Usually, these studies always talk about the Nusselt number, which is basically an average convective heat transfer. Nobody ever studied the fluctuating heat transfer, the fluctuations around the average? I see. The fluctuation, fluctuation around, around the average. average. Uh, is that never studied? Uh... I don't think so. For example, if we if we consider the, the homogeneous uh, thermal convection, as I mentioned, it, in that case we also see the ultimate scaling because we are free from the wall. So we know the large amplitude of the fluctuation of that system. So I'm not sure, but uh, maybe the there are several info, uh, uh, the reports on the fluctuation of the Nusselt number, I think. But maybe the numerical, the experimentally, it's very hard. Mm. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, any more questions? Okay, so maybe I can I can ask you a couple of questions from from my side. Oh, so, um, yes, please. Just 
Um, so the first question is, uh, um, in, in you, you show the difference between uh, um, uh, smooth and uh, uh, rough walls. Um, and uh, to, to somehow to demonstrate the difference, you consider the, uh, the case of, um, of a rough wall in which the, the roughness was made by kind of a very sharp uh, uh, teeth uh, on, 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 on the wall. I mean, does the, kind, does the, the topology of the roughness uh, affect uh, the, the results and which kind of uh, effect do you think this has uh, on the general conclusion you draw? I see, I see. I'm going to share the slide. So I'm afraid I have not performed the, the, the study on the rough wall, but uh, I don't think that the shape of the rough wall do not uh, depend, do not affect much the, the heat transfer. For example, This is a typical explanation. So, velocity field, of course, we are under the action of the pressure. So, if I have some something here, we see the flow separation. But in energy equation, we don't have any the corresponding fluctuation. So, we we see the uh, thermal conduction layer on the roughness surface. So that is the key difference between the two. So if we see the flow separation from the obstacle, obstacle of the roughness, we don't care the shape of the, uh, the, the shape. Then of course we need a uh, rough body leading to uh, uh, flow separation and the same is true for the thermal convection. In case of thermal convection, the same is true. Mm. And if we consider the relatively low daily number at which we see the comparable length scale of the the vortices and the thermal conduction layer. We expect the good heat transfer by vortices because they are embedded on the thermal conduction layer. But if we further increase the Rayleigh number, the thermal conduction layer are much thinner than the dimension of the vortices. So vortices out of the thermal conduction layer. So they do not play a role in heat transfer enhancement. So the difference between the heat transfer and uh, uh, vortices or momentum transfer do not depend much on the, the shape. The key is the flow separation, I think. And this is a conclusion which you can uh somehow generalize it regardless of the Prandtl number or if we are at Prandtl numbers which are quite small. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, that we should take into account uh, the Prandtl number effect. But uh, in, in my talk, I already consider that that would be around you. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. if we Prandtl number is apart from the unity, we see the difference. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And uh, one more question, which is more like, uh, I mean, I'm totally not an expert in the field, so it's uh, it might sound uh, a naive question, but uh, I mean, how much does the Businet approximation impact on the results? Because I saw in the simulation you use uh, like uh, just a linear expansion, which is commonly used, huh? but is there like uh, 
an impact of higher order terms when you go to automate regimes? Yeah, thank you very much. So maybe there are uh, many arguments of non businessque effects on the ultimate heat transfer. So we introduce a large value of the temperature difference to see the ultimate scaling. So we might have some affection and there are uh, many uh, discussions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can increase the uh, very number for enlarge of the length scale. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, so even at the very high level number, it up to the, the approach to the increase in a lady number. But uh, if we consider the extension of the length to so our uh, business approximation should work very well for the representation of ultimate scaling, I think. So basically, as far as the flow properties don't change much with the temperature, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's uh, that's supposed to work and then uh, if you realize the ultimate regime with uh, a large increase of temperature so a large deviation from the linear uh, expansion that's uh, that's supposed to 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 have an impact on, on the, the observed uh, results that's is am i yeah. incorrect yes. okay okay thanks thank you so hi hi uh... The point is a higher body of lady number with relatively small body of temperature difference. That is uh, the point. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that's uh, that's also a matter of uh, of the um, uh, of the fluid you use. I mean, if it's a fluid which is strongly sensitive to temperature differences in terms of the of the thermophysical properties, uh, it's much more difficult to control. Uh, um, like a, a, if, a, if a small variation of temperature makes uh, a, has a large impact on the flow properties because they are strongly nonlinear, that's uh, the turbulence, the, the, like the correction to, to the Bosinesk approximation should be important. Otherwise, you can still play with size and so on. So such that it sure, it is uh, distinct to the, the topics, but uh, we are also now working on the experiment of the, the thermal convection uh, by introducing this type of the more, real, not more, real, that is a real the permeable walls. And uh, we see the onset of the ultimate scaling in our experiment. So I think uh, we really uh, achieved the ultimate scaling by introduction of this type of wall permeability. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's definitely very 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 interesting. Um, okay, so is there someone else who would like to ask a question or? Uh, once again, feel free to, to open your mic or to write in the chat if you, uh, if you want me to report the question. Okay, so this does not seem to be the case. So uh, thank you once again, Genta, for this uh, very, very insightful uh, uh, webinar. Uh, I invite the, the participant to, to thank our speaker again. And um, uh, so I want to, to, to thank you once again, and I hope to see you soon, to see you all uh, uh, in the next seminar uh, uh, next week. Thank you very much for your giving me the fantastic opportunity to talk about our recent work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks again. Have a good evening to, to everyone. Uh, good night to you, Genta. <laughs> Thank you for, for, uh, for accepting a seminar so late. Sorry for the time. Yeah, thank you, Ganda, for a great seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again soon. So am I. Good night. Good night. Thank you.